Josh Kalis. Born in Grand Rapids, Dallas, Texas, San Diego, San Francisco, Chicago, Philadelphia, and then I, then I just go through them again. Back to Chicago, back to here, back to there. So. Actually, it was the Bones Brigade. It was kind of a group of them, yeah, at uh, Wind Waves and Wheels in Rockford, Michigan, on the, uh, I think they called it Superstructure Vert Ramp. You know what, I really liked all that world stuff, jerking Jordan and uh, all that shit was cool. The Garbage Pail Kids graphics were cool. It was a lot of cool stuff. Probably the number one go-to hype video would be Hocus Pocus. Matt Hensley's part in Hocus Pocus was the shit. Oh. What's the front? This one or this one? Uh, yeah, it was. Really? 93? That's how long ago that was? Yeah, that was the first, like, mainstream... Actually, it was the first anything I've been in. Lick video. Uh, Woodward Skate Camp, I think, right? After this, I was getting boxes. But then I got locked up for a little bit, and when I got out, I couldn't get boxes anymore. But, yeah, I was getting A3 boxes for a while. It was locked up in like a, a crisis prevention center. I was in there for six months and when I got out, the A Street thing wasn't an option anymore. I remember Mike Maldonado and Bam had some Woodward stuff in there too. That's about it. I think I just watched that section. I'm not gonna lie, I probably didn't really care too much. <laughs> yeah, 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 I remember the red pants, the fuck, the fuck jeans. Those were the shit, dude. Dude, I wore those to my first day in school. I went to Rockwall High School for like a week and I wore red fuck pants and I fought the whole football team. Like they pantsed me and I swung and hit a dude and he just went and then bodied me and I was just like, fuck this. So yeah, I remember them pants very well. <laughs> I would consider this my real, you know what I mean? This is the uh, Toy Machine Heavy Metal video. Yeah, this would have been my first like legitimate video part. I vaguely even remember doing it. Like I remember being in the parking lot, but I don't remember being like, damn, I did a 360 flip, how come it wasn't in the part? And truthfully, looking back at it, I, I kind of prefer it being in the intro. It was shocking to me, just like it was shocking to everyone else. I, like we were watching it and I was just like, Whoa, I did that? You know what I mean? Because I think we were there to film something else and we were just on our way back to the car. I'd have to look at my gear. If I'm wearing the same gear that when the little kid dissed me on the, on the five, we weren't even there for that bump. Yeah, I was pretty stoked on it, for sure. Yeah, Deer to Cat the guest tricks because I was hanging out at their house across the street nonstop. I didn't think so. There was no plans. I just remember hearing rumors that Rob was like, yo, Kayla, you ride for the workshop? And it was like, I thought it was all bullshit. So, you know, I was just like, what the fuck? I kind of like fronted on him, like, what the fuck? And he was like, no, 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 man, if you want to ride, just let us know. And I was like, uh oh. Then it became like a, a reality. You know? I left, but not right away. Yeah, Real was on the table. Yeah, because I was real close with Drake Jones. It was kind of between Real and Alien. I wasn't staying on Toy Machine. Yeah. I was never approached by any of those guys now, but I definitely would have been like, fuck yeah, let's go. But looking back at it now, I'm glad that I never was approached by any of that stuff, yeah. Dude, to tell you the truth, it's kind of like meeting some of my favorite pros growing up. I should have never met him. And I kind of stay away from all that shit anyway. Big disappointment. So if I would have rode for some of my favorite companies back in the day, I probably would have been disappointed. Oh, yeah. 
That's the one right there. November 1995. It's my first cover. I did not know it was going to be a cover, no. No, I don't remember. I just remember being like, wow, it's Costin and Mariano interviews in my cover. You know, I wasn't even pro on the cover, and I could be wrong, but somebody was telling me that this was the first AM cover, maybe. Just the fact that it has Costin and Mariano in there. Yeah, this was a good one. I think I've chilled up here before. And if I remember right, it was like, hey, like, let's shoot a photo. It sucked, it was a pain in the ass. Strictly for visual, yeah. It was strictly for the photo. Everyone asked me like, where's the footage, where's the footage? And it was just like, dude, on the other side here, I think there was like three feet of concrete and then it was literally gravel. So I would land, hit the gravel, slide out, go back up, come around the thing, yank on the bar that's right here, smash up, back 180, land, ride, gravel, it, it, it was a shitty process. Yeah, the photo's dope. I thought it was cool. You know what I mean? I thought it was cool. You know, I liked when I opened it and it had the homage in there. And I was like, wow, that's dope, you know? Yeah, yeah, sure. Where you want it? Yep. I don't remember if those are Dukes or Duffs. I would, I, you know what, I just try to like zoom in on it. It can't be, I don't know. Is it? You know. <laughs> you think so? I don't know if it is or isn't. If that's my first ad, I'm a little disappointed in it. Look, the wheel's hanging over the edge like it's an overcrook, not even like a back nose one. There's no introduction. The only thing cool about it is Tobin shot it. Tobin's pretty rad. We're gonna have to confirm if that's the very first one or not. What's this one? Oh, snap. <laughs> it's me and my dude right there, Lenny Kirk. Hey, look, this time, I got the Vans half cabs on. See, people think I'm bullshit when I used to get flowed five different companies. Dukes, Vans, Duffs, Etnies. I got shoes from everybody, dude. <laughs> Adidas. <laughs> this was very short lived. I can't remember how that came about. The reason why this was so short lived, I hadn't committed to any shoe company yet. I was getting shoes from everybody. And then somehow this came about, uh, they were going to shoot the ad, you know what I mean? Like we're going to shoot the Adidas ad. And the photographer they brought was just some schmuck ass dude. And I was like, what the fuck? He's shooting me like warming up. I was like, yo, you can't shoot that. And he was like, no, well, I've never shot skate before. And I remember being like, well, if you've never shot skate before, what are you even doing here? And they looked at me like I was like crazy. And they were like, can you do something on that wall? I don't know, I could probably no slide it. And they didn't even know what a no slide was. So that's it, right? But it's not a real sequence. Each photo is an individual photo from a different try. Like look, this little white thing here. So here's what happened with this, okay? I went to the trade show and I was kind of juiced like, yeah, man, I got Adidas. You know, I'm walking through the trade show. I look up in the rafters and there's this hanging like 20 feet tall, Adidas. Kayla's. And I was like, oh shit. And I walk over and I'm, here's all the DC guys. Ken Block, Deer Dick, Danny Way, Colin McKay. And Ken Block looks at me and he's like, and I look up and I'm just like, oh man. And they all start laughing at me, clowning me and shit. And I was just like, I quit. I quit right then and there. I no longer ride for Adidas. But they, and they wouldn't send me shell toes. They kept sending me this fucking shoe. And I'm like, guys, I want shell toes. Is that an Adidas shirt? Holy shit, it is. Oh. Going in hard, man. Dude, that's crazy. Ah. I remember it. It's a pretty good shape. You know how wide it is? How wide is that? Is that a 7.4, 7.5? No, it's a bigger. It's like a 7.6 or something. Really? Yeah. It looks like 7.6. That's Penny, my board expert. You know what, I always liked the workshop graphics that had like the light colors on them. They seemed like extra crispy. They started getting into all the dipping and all that stuff later on and I wasn't really a big fan of that to tell you the truth. But I didn't have a choice. Ah, yeah. See, now that's a good shape. Oh wow, damn, this thing is mint, wow. Yeah, this one's mint. I thought these were pretty cool. I think I tried to keepsake one of these. But my biggest problem is I'm just too nice. Somebody asked me if I have one and I just, yeah. 
Here, take this one. Could be my last one or not. I think that's what happened with this one. I have the tech deck though. I saved a lot of the tech deck ones that came out of these because they're smaller and they don't take up as much space. Dude, they're in the storage in a box like, oh shit, they got the tech deck one. Let me just grab that one. Super sick. I skated it for sure. Yeah. And that shape is banging. Does it? It does like the same shape. So that's like a 7.4 probably. Yeah. That one's super good. Yeah. No. What do you got still? I did save my very first rookie board, I would call it. The bottles? Yeah, it had all the bottles on it and stuff, but I was in FTC one day and I was looking at their wall, you know, and I was like, damn, they don't got a Kayla's board up there. So I said, hey, you guys want my board up there? And they were like, fuck yeah. And I was like, are you sure? Cause I don't want to like force it on you, but they were like, no, please. Cause I had a pretty cool run with FTC. So I just gave it to them. I did have the love board, which was my favorite graphic of all time. The J O S H one. And I gave the last one I have of those to actually Penny. Nah, I think he got that one on his own. I punch females, I punch cops, I spit punch lines. I don't need to punch clocks. If pop on the verbal resurrection, you would sell out, take them tight pants off and take the gerbil out your rectum. He came out to my house like, what, a year ago? Has it been a year? And I showed it to him. I'm like, hey, check this out, Penny. He was like, ooh, you know what I mean? And, and then I, I gave it to him. But then I, he wouldn't bring it on the plane, so I got to ship it to him. And I'm bad with shipping. I still have, I'm keeping it safe for him. Oh, speak of the devil. Yeah, that's the best one right there. This is the best one. Mine's in better shape than this one. Or Penny's in better shape than this one. They did forge my signature. Wow. Yeah, this is, this is my favorite graphic right here. This is the best one right here. I didn't have any ideas for any graphics. Yeah, they just they just came out. Yeah, this showed up and it was on that shape and I was like, wow, this one's dope, you know? You know, having my name attached to that was something I felt like I had to earn, you know? Like getting the tat and all that stuff, it it wasn't just gonna, I wasn't just gonna do it. When it, when it was like given to me, that's when I was like, oh shit, okay, that's dope. Cause I can't tell somebody to do that. So I was pretty hyped. This is my favorite one right here. Dude, I think they were selling, if I remember right, like 6,000 of these a month. Dude, my royalty checks were banging. Dude, <laughs> banging. I mean, maybe people are still selling that many boards a month, but I don't know, man. We were crushing it. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah, I don't know for sure, but that's what everybody says. 746 or something like that. Oh, yeah, this was the, this was the shape. Look at that. If you made this exact shape just a little bit bigger, I mean. The other one I really like is the, the one with the, it's like a weird cat head that said Kalos underneath. And Palace just did like a O2 with the Palace. Ah oh, yeah, that one was sick too. Well thank you for that. Define an era, that's pretty dope. I like that. Time code. Dang, what's this? I didn't know it came with that. That's pretty cool. I'll put it back in there if you want. Okay. Oh, you don't want to lose it, huh? <laughs> yeah, all right, all right, all right. The cat, right? Yeah, the cat. I got to remember the cat because my, once I had my daughter and she was watching it one time, she was so juiced that I, I was the cat because she's like a freak about cats. Is have a cat wind-up toy? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, Lenny's part is off the chain. Switch backside 180, nose grind down hubba, Lenny. I have a line in Dallas with this. It's not really a line, but it's like ollie up a two stair, then a kick flip back lip on these benches. Lenny Kirk filmed that. I hated the way it was filmed. I mean, I didn't hate it, but I was like, we should definitely film it better. Maybe don't, like, let's just do it single, you know? And the very next try, I, I like sacked it, fell back. Pretty much, I didn't break my wrist, but I sprained it so bad I couldn't skate for weeks.
This one is different than the one that was in the video, in the Timeco video. This was the second one. The first time I did it was in the Timeco video. And then this is just another one of those like, hey, we need that for an ad. Can you do it again? All right, let's do it. And this one wasn't as cool feeling as the first one. The first one was like, the session was on fire and you know what I mean? It just stuck in and came out and it felt real good. This one was more of a, like a job, you know? It was like more of a mission. Yeah, I think, who shot this, Ballard? I don't remember if it did, if it came quick or it didn't come quick. Other people were skating on the day, the first time I did it, but I don't remember exactly what. It could have been Lenny. Am I supposed to find anything specific? Oh, right oh Dill. Yeah, I didn't really know Dill back in these days. No, I didn't know. I don't know, that's kind of crazy. It's like maybe one of those reasons why I was glad I didn't get <laughs> on those guys. <laughs> Dude, that's so crazy. <laughs> Contract negotiations. Wow, dude. You know what? I'd never had a contract with Alien Workshop, ever. All right. Sixth Sense video. Transworld. What year did this come out? 98 probably, huh? This is probably my favorite video part I've ever done in here. Yeah, it was the most fun. Yeah, this is probably my favorite one. When I first started skating, I liked to watch people do tricks. And I just thought to myself, like, man, I really want to learn how to do that. Soon you'll see as I flow fluently to frequently another MC will drop forth the face of this earth for what it's worth. I've been the nastiest one since birth. I'll do the simple shit. Strike one It was, yeah. Yeah, I was trying to get him out. I mean, I think Stevie almost got on Alien. I think there was like weird trust issues back then. Probably on both sides. You know what I mean? It just didn't work out. Low pro interactive, go rope and cost not to flow by all means necessary. Back and rob the automatic. Check the barrel circle. Dude, the banks were off the chain. It was just grimy and everybody, you know, was there and it was supposed to be kind of like the warm-up spot, but it ended up being all day. Because you didn't get messed with and People were walking through and you could yell at everybody and everybody's yelling at somebody and it's just a good session. Yeah, dude, the first time I went to the banks was like 88 or 89. You know, when I first started skating because my mother lived in Queens. Yeah, I'm totally satisfied right now. I wouldn't change anything. I'm satisfied. And I was running around Queens with a kid named David Trujillo. And he was a couple years older than me and he knew how to take the trains and shit. And he was just like, look, let's go downtown. I mean, this is when you put your hardware in upside down on the front truck. So when you ollie, you would grab it and yank it up. The noses were real short. Yeah, I was, I was at the banks way, way back. Uh, yeah, I got two, two favorite tricks over the banks wall. Costin's nolly back heel and Welsh's switch 360 flip. I wasn't there for neither of them, no. Unfortunately, whenever I skated the bank's wall, I was kind of a solo mission. <laughs> uh, peep this. No cover? Oh man, we gotta get you a cover. Peep this. Yeah, this was a fun video right here. No, I did not pick my song. This is uh, all RB. Oh, that was cool. Some Darth Vader thing. I don't recall specifically filming for this video. I could be wrong. RB could have told me like, hey, I'm filming for my video called Peep This. He might have told me that, but right now I, I, I don't remember that. Because I would just film with RB all the time. We would just film. There wasn't a lot of avenues for footage to go to back then. So if he put it in there, he put it in there. That's what I remember. He might tell you different. He might, he might be like, dude, 
I told him we were filming for a fucking video. This, this shit was specifically for this video. It is your destiny. To kick flip over the barrel, man. Uh, I don't know if any of if the other ones were any different or not. I have no idea. I know that it was like the smallest little incline. It wasn't a bump. I think it was just like a an incline up to the curb. It was mainly for the photo. You'll see a dude laying on the ground down there, right? I forget his name, but I, I'm pretty sure that's what I was doing it for. Was for that photo, but that photo didn't turn out. But RB was filming it, and yeah, the footage came out good. Yeah, yeah, I got lucky. I got lucky on it. You'd have to watch all the previous tries to see if they were all similar, but in my opinion, I just, I got lucky on one. I was hyped, I could kick flip back then. <laughs> there it is, the orange tape. At least you watch it. Photosynthesis, Alien Workshop. I did, I picked both my songs for this. I picked Freddie Fox and I picked Black Rob. I remember them being like, okay, you serious? You wanna use that song? It's like, yeah, man. And I want Ricky and Anthony Korea in it and Kevin and they were just like, Stevie. All right, dude. No, still to this day, I'm happy I picked those songs because the songs in this video part, well, not the Black Rob one. The Black Rob one was just hype. That one was just some hype. But the Freddie Fox song, there was shit going on in Philadelphia skate scene that that was me speaking to these people who I thought were dragging their feet. They were kind of dogging me in their own little cliques. That was my life. Fuck you, you know? Straight up. Ain't no hiding that. Well, to tell you the honest truth, I, I thought I was just gathering footage, but people have told me, or I've watched in other interviews, like Deerdick interviews and shit like that, where he's like, oh yeah, we were filming on for photo sentences, we were going on trips and all that stuff. And dude, like I said, man, my memory back in them days are like, it's pretty crazy. So I probably was filming specifically for it. Uh, there's a clip in my part that I wish I had redone. And that is the, the line that ends with the switch, back tail, switch flip back tail leaving love. Um, but I think we got thrown out right, like right then. And so I didn't get a chance. I know I definitely was retrying it. It kind of fell out. I mean, everybody knows it. There ain't no hiding it. You know what I mean? It fell out. <laughs> I just watched it two nights ago at Penny's house. I'm staying here at Penny and this guy's got, this guy's got, check this out. You can be jealous. He's got premiere copy, DVD, of Photosynthesis, the original and a re-edited one, like a premiere edited one that's different and has different shit in it. And he's like, dude, I'm putting in Photosynthesis. I'm like, come on, man. Watch that shit a thousand times. And he puts it, I'm like, wait a minute. That's a different song. That's a different trick. Yeah, it was, he's got it. With all the commercials and everything. I really liked uh, Papalardo's stuff in this video. Yeah, Papalardo was dope. He was like one of my favorites, you know? For sure, yeah. I didn't like the Habitat stuff. I'm not even gonna lie, man. We were Alien Workshop. I didn't understand why Habitat had to be in the video. Yeah, Habitwack. It was Habitwack, but I'll wait for this garbage truck. Well, look, man, not for nothing, there was like a weird beef with Deerdick and the guy who started Habitat or came up with the name, and it had to do with a skate shop thing. Like, Deerdick was part owner of a skate shop in Ohio named Habitat. When they closed the skate shop, I don't remember, I don't remember who it was. It might have been Kastrusi or somebody, but they asked Rob specifically, like, hey, do you mind if we use this name? And Rob was like, I'd rather you not. And they did it anyway. So me having allegiance to Rob, it was like my best friend, he was bummed at Habitat. So I was like, fuck Habitat, they're in my world. I gotta look at these dudes all the time and, and I'm trying to motivate them. Me trying to motivate these guys to skate and do certain shit, it was 
firing back at me as like, oh, Kalos is a dick. So there, there, was, there was weird vibes going on here in Philadelphia between me and Habitat. So I was like, fucking dudes are Habitat. It's not that I didn't dislike the guys. It was just like, they, weren't, they were different than, than me. We had different mentalities. We weren't like-minded. Ah, eh, winning is different. Winning was my boy, you know? No, never offered Habitat. Uh, well, I mean, I really, I, dude, I really liked uh, Abe's part, too. It's just so strong and, you know, powerful. It's got to be uh, G and Fat Bill. Yeah, because I, I think Kastrusi came to Philadelphia to film me for this video. And I, I just, I just, yeah, I just wasn't down. I was like, who is this guy? Bill came to love. Nobody knew who he was, he just was there, you know? And I'm a dude that's like, if I wanna do something and you're available and I don't know you, but you're down to like work with me with something, and then we're, we're like-minded. You love filming, I love skating, I need to get filmed, you're down to film, you're my guy. You don't have to be some industry dude. And Bill was that dude, Bill was like, I'm down, let's do it, let's go here. And if I, got, if I tried it, he'd be like, man, you got this, don't even trip. Forget about that. He, he was just like a motivator, you know, to me. I was staying at my mom's house before in, in the suburbs of Philadelphia before I got an apartment. I was like actively looking for an apartment. And so, oh yeah, I need to shoot an ad. So I was looking for an apartment. I needed to shoot an ad for Alien. And somebody gave me G's number. They were, cause G was like doing journal and was just getting into trans world or something like that. So I just randomly called this dude named Ryan G. Was like, hey dude, this kid, Josh Kayla's fucking, I don't know if you know me or not, but I gotta shoot a photo, like, and apparently you're the guy. And he was like, whoa, yeah, all right, meet me down here. And so we went down to City Hall, shot the switch front tail down the six stair rail up against the wall. And that was the first time me and G ever worked together. And we were like-minded too. He was in the cars, I was in the cars. The reason why it worked out so well is because when, when, I, when I have to do a trick, I have to do a little hop to get my feet, you know what I mean? And my pop comes from that hop. At Newport, after the switchback nose grind or whatever it was, that specific fakie flip, I, maybe my feet were stuck or something, but I didn't get my hop. So if you look at it, I like make a little move, but I don't hop. And that's why it fucking exploded the way it exploded because it was unnatural for me. And I got lucky as shit on that fakie flip. Oh, a half cab front nose grind. I got lucky with that because it kind of twisted a little bit, crooky a little bit, you know, it's just, I don't know. That line was like, a, it was like the stars in line for me. It was all fucked up. I shouldn't even have made a fakie flip because I didn't get my hop. I didn't think about that fakie flip being a good fakie flip until five years ago when people started talking about it. We back it, then flip it like ho. Oh, Cause we jack it, then strip it like ho. Oh, fully equip it, front to back like ho. Oh, Spitting on fiends that come for crack like ho. Oh, Asking for sure some shit, nigga, like ho. Oh, Half on this quote, now nigga, that's ho. Oh, flow so properly, you'll see I'm ho. Oh, ain't no stopping me, I'm deep like ho. Oh. Wow, oh, seek. The company that happened but didn't happen. Seek was way ahead of his time. Seek was supposed to be a company that allowed like a worldwide community on the team where people didn't have to come live in the States. You know, we have uh, Flo in Europe and Alex in Brazil, you know, me and Rob in the States. That's really what Seek was supposed to be about. Um, Flo, stay in Europe, do your thing out there, represent. You don't have to come to California to do your thing. And we we're proving this by you know, Josh living in Philly. He doesn't have to go to California to do it. You know, that whole deal. I think it was something to make up for Habitat. Like trying to give Rob a, a little something because there might've been some bad blood between him and the owners about Habitat. And I, I think Seek was like supposed to be part of that. Dude, I didn't know. Because truthfully, I'm just here in Philly. I'm just trying to skate. You want to start Seek? Oh, I get paid the same? Cool. You know what I mean? Oh, with Flo and Alex? I was down. I just watched a puzzle video of Flo doing a Nolly Crook down the dome, and the whole party's skating alien boards. Who the fuck is this guy? 
You know, and they're like, oh yeah, we flow him out there. I'm like, get him out here. He came to Philadelphia. I'd never met him in my life and he stayed with me at my house. It was in the winter time, middle of winter. So he would skate Love by himself. And he was like, man, Love's kind of rough. He was like, if this was in Paris, like we might not even skate it, like, you know? I was like, what? Me and Flo, you know, we're pretty like-minded. And I'd take him to the TF here in uh, Philly and them dudes would vibe him out. Kerry and Polhowski and all those guys, they were like, they'd vibe him out. And my man's doing nollie, half cab heel flip, nose blunt slides on the flat bar. And these dudes would like sit down and not skate with them or they would just pack their shit up and leave. And I was just like, man, that's whack. I was hyped to have Flo and them on, but I didn't have any control. I didn't have any say. I was just a, a skater that rode for Seek. And then it vanished one day and they were like, hey, we don't have enough manpower or enough time, that's what they told me. We're putting you back on Alien. There we go. This is one I wish I kept. I wish I kept one of these. Matter of fact, I'm gonna just keep this one. Come on, Penny. You think I'm kidding, I'm out. I'm just kidding. All right, I'm kidding, you called my bluff. Yep, I wish I had kept one of these. I worked real hard for that. It wasn't for Kalis and Mono specifically, like, all the work that I did. It was, it was for, I think, what would be Minefield. So all the footage in Kalos and Mono should be in Minefield. I mean, it's a cool, like, kind of portrait silhouette thing, but you can see my head's down. I mean, I'm walking off. I'm walking off something right there that's just beat my ass. I had a lot of fun filming for all the footage that was in this with Thomas Winkle out in Barcelona. I mean, just like Fat Bill, just like G, like, just so like-minded and and we're good friends you know what I mean became good friends from filming and doing all that I was just so ready to like have a powerful part because I don't think I ever had like a last part in a video I was just like man I'm going in and I'm back on alien seek didn't work out I'm I'm going in and I you know I worked my fucking ass off dude and uh, I was like what do you mean the footage is getting pushed and they fucking pushed it dude so I was like all right well I'm letting my footage out and I can do that because I didn't have a company filmer film it. I filmed with my homies, so me and my homies can dictate where the footage goes. Nah. They dictated where it went. I tried to get it in the Transworld video. Actually, Transworld asked me to be in the video. I was like, I got a whole part. Denied. Alien denied it. 411 was having their last issue of 411. They were like, dude, we want to give you the box cover, blah, blah, the whole nine. Yeah, take it. Alien denied it. They came up with Kalos and Mono, which I thought is, you know, it was cool. It was like, it at least let people know that I was out, you know, working hard and shit. But then they had to taint it by putting that Habitat shit in it. Regal Road. Like, here I am. I just worked my fucking ass off, traveled to Spain mad times for a video that got pushed in at least another year. Can't do anything with the footage, so they are going to do something with the footage. And then they put Habitat, Regal Road, and I was just like... It's fucking dumb. I was already kind of in an alien workshop down downhill spiral, you know what I mean? And then this, that regal road being put on my shit that I worked so hard for was, I was just like, fuck you guys. That was it. But I love the board because I just see the frustration and then I see like the hard work and I see what I was like trying to represent, what I was giving it all for. It's all there. I ain't happy right there, you know? I don't know. Maybe I'll get one someday. Ooh, sorry. I didn't mean to put a killer vibe on that one. Earliest memory of Love Park, when I was visiting my mom, who had moved from Queens, New York, to the suburbs of Philadelphia, and I came out here for a visit. It must have been 14 or 15. These guys up in Levittown, names were Matt and Pete. They always wanted to skate Levittown, but they could drive, you know? And I was like, man, let's go downtown. And we came downtown Philadelphia and we were skating around and we just, we, we just ended up there. Like nobody knew that there was a place called Love Park. We were just like, wow, look at this place. The three stairs around the fountain is what we skated, doing Ollie Japan's backside grabs. And that's where I met Roger Brown for the first time that day, yeah. But I, I didn't know like Roger Brown, it was just like, hey, what's up, I'm Josh, like, oh, I'm Roger, like, blah, blah, it was tight. The corner ledge that led to the main ledge. Like those two, you know? Doing a crooked grind and then a back tail on the main ledge or something. Those two ledges were my favorite to skate. Peter Smollett, probably. 
He's probably the most random dude to roll through. Yeah, and I didn't know if he had beef or not. He did an interview and somebody asked him, like, Hubba Hideout, and he was like, switch back tail, shove. And I was just, I read it and I'm like, wait a minute, I think some people called me too, and I was like, who the fuck is Peter Smolik, you know? And then somebody was like, Peter Smolik's at love, but I was at City Hall, I think, and we didn't, I don't think we even saw each other, but it wasn't like a beef. It was just kind of like, I was kind of like, wait a minute, what's this dude doing here, you know what I mean? I ollied love way back in the day, like in the, in the days leading up to uh, when me and Ricky had beef, when I, I was skating with Bam and, and Dan Wolf actually quite a bit. And then in the latter days, I tried to nollie it. Yeah, I got to see quite a bit of stuff go down. I think my favorite was uh, Jeremy Ray's Frontside 360. And the most, the most intriguing thing about it is people start in the middle of the road trying to get as much speed as they can. Push 10 times between the two stair and love, but Jeremy Ray, dude, he just literally like took like a four step run, jumped on his board, two pushes, and just would just float across the whole shit. And that's what was impressive to me. I was like, oh my God, my man could just boof. Yeah, I was in the cut. Like I wasn't right there in the mix, you know what I mean? I was just kind of in the background. All good, man. This is the Bob shirt interview. This shit ends up on slap. Oh, Stevie. Damn, this is a rookie board, huh? Yeah, that's a dope one right there. You know, I get emotional when I see that one. I mean, he looks mad. You can tell he's been through some shit. He says I first met him at the Rat Curbs, which is here in Philly. I thought I first met him at Love, but he's probably got a better memory than me. Ah, uh, we did. I mean, it was like, I think it was not just so much me and Stevie, but it was like Stevie's squad. When I first came down, I didn't have like, you know, friends or a squad or anything like that. So his squad was more like me as far as personalities and kind of troublemakers and just being a little rug rat. So I just kind of fit in with them. They all varied with age. Stevie was like the youngest, it's like the little rascals. I think my favorite Stevie clip of all time is the, uh, the switch heel, fakie Manny, fakie hard flip out. That's my favorite because I know, I know he had to feel some type of way when he watched that. I'm sure he was psyched when he did it, but when it was like in the mix of all those people and all his peers and all that stuff and it ended with him doing that move, like I could just imagine he was just like, fuck yeah, for sure that one where he does the, the Nolly 180 Switch 5.0 revert, and then you see me in the background with my hands up, you know, and then him gives me a little point. And he, he ends it with the Nolly half cap heel Switch Manny. Comes out a little early, and I thought that was dope. Because me and Stevie, we didn't really hang out on the daily, you know? We hung out at Love. We hung out if we seen each other in like Frisco or some other city, but as soon as the sun went down, we would go our separate rays. I'd go street racing or some shit, and. He'd go hang out with his boys and, and that was it. But we always had like a strong bond when it came to how we felt about love and how we wanted it to feel and look and stuff like that. City Hall. <laughs> Muni. Oh yeah. The Limited Reds. JK1s. I did hand draw this shoe, yes. Yeah. And I did colored pencils for the colorways. This color was never supposed to come out. This color and the baby blues were never supposed to come out. I called DC, I said, hey, can I do some custom colorways just for me? And they were like, yeah. So I did all red and white and all baby blue and white. And Kelly Bird was the team manager at the time. And when they came in, he called me, he goes, yo, your Smurf shoes are in. And I don't know if you know Kelly, but like, he's a pretty funny guy. Yo, Kayla, your Smurf shoes are in fucking things. It's like, oh, send them out to me. So he sends them out. I was hyped on them. I'm like, damn, these are sick. Because truthfully, I always liked the Sal Barbier shoes that he was skating in that uh, Plan B video or something where he had all red shoes. I was like, damn, those look sick. So that's, that's where the idea for these actually came from. I 
flew out to California to go to a trade show and I was wearing, I don't know if it was the red or baby blues, I just was wearing them around the trade show. And apparently some of the accounts were tripping out on them and asking DC all about them. They ended up making them and coming out with them. And they did really good. And I was like, I thought they were fucking Smurf shoes. But no, they did good. It did really good. I know the second shoe, The Truth, did really good too. Yeah, both of them did. I don't remember. I think it was something that they were trying to push. It had to do with my aesthetic was, you know, with the running pants and the sweatpants and all that stuff. I think they, that's why they wanted to add something like that. These type of things, we don't really get much say. When they're trying to push specific technology, there's some things that you can't really say. A lot of other things you can, like colors and all that, especially back in these days, you know? Now looking back, I see the importance that the shoe had and how significant it was and how popular it was. At the time back then, it, you know, I thought I gave everybody the shoes. Because I was giving them out like, like crazy, whether it was here or Chicago or whatever. I just thought, you know, all the homies were wearing them because I gave them to them. It wasn't until like later when the nostalgia side, you know, started coming back where I was like, wow, that shoe actually was out there. And this is before like companies were selling to mall stores and Foot Locker and wherever shoes are sold nowadays. I mean, this was like real skate shop shit. I don't think DC or Kalos has ever put a skate shop out of business. I don't know. I know some people have. This hasn't. <laughs> is that fucked up? I really like Vans Chuckaboos, but that was like Hensley inspired. Vans, van half calves were cool for a little bit when you, when you had to cut them and tape them up. I really liked the Airwalk Enigmas, you know, Mike Carroll inspired, and Adidas Sheltos. Ugliest skate shoe ever made? D3, without a doubt. Or my third shoe, The Verdict. And it's fucked up, because the Verdict commercial that we did over here at Love was banging. But the shoe was garbage. What can you do? Yo, uh, I think this kid here, we still like chat a little bit from time to time. I forget his name, he'll probably smack me for forgetting his name, but either Facebook or Instagram, like he'll comment it ain't shit or you know, something like that. Cause that was the story is every time I would fuck up, I'd come back and tell, look him right in his eyes, be like, man, it ain't shit, right? And he would just be like, it ain't shit. It ain't shit. It ain't shit. Yeah, not me, I'm like, fuck that. The louder, the more the merrier. I remember one of the first times I seen like, I think uh, Jeremy Rogers switch flipped a gap at, in Sacramento. And when the camera panned out, it was like Mike Mo or maybe it was Malto, I don't know, it was like a crew of guys. And they were like holding it in. You know, they were like. I was like, what the fuck is that? Like, that's how it's got to be. Oh, shit! This f What the fuck? Anyway. Super huge accomplishment feeling, but the difference is, is, like, we get samples first. So they send, like, a shoe that looks really good and similar to it, and then you send it back, and they got to change it, and blah, blah, blah. So it's not like all of a sudden you, this comes, you gotta go through the process. So by the time it's a complete package, you're kind of already like numb to it. That's the ill shit. Seeing a kid out in the wild wearing them, knowing that they actually paid for them. I don't remember the very first time. But even to this day, when I see somebody riding one of my boards or a pair of my shoes or something, I'm like, pretty fucking dope. Don't you know I'm old and shit now, but it's still pretty cool. <laughs> Ooh. This is definitely one of my favorite graphics, for sure. It's like me, I'm an alien. Even DGK knows that I'm an alien. And they're just like beaming me up to DGK world. I mean, there's no disrespect there. It really, like look, I'm an alien. I think it's awesome. The fact that they put a cease and desist on that, eh, come on, it's pretty petty. I thought that this was a cool tribute a cool ode to like me being an alien, you know what I mean? And putting a DGK hat on and I'm going with them. That's how I looked at it. I didn't look at it as a diss or anything. I didn't know they were doing this. They literally 
made the board, showed me the sample. I was like, dude, that shit is fucking awesome. And they were like, yeah, they might have feelings about it. I'm like, dude, they can't have feelings about it. It's, it's fucking awesome. Going to DGK was actually my idea. Me and Stevie were just rapping out on the phone about something, and uh, I was gonna do this other thing, and, and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, why would I do something new, Steve? I was like, me and you should just link up. Why don't I just come over to DGK? And he was like, whoa. It was like both of us were kind of like, wait a minute, yeah, why not? I was gonna do a board company with Apple Yard. No name or nothing, it was just, it, that was just something that we were tossing around. And we were both like, yeah, let's do it. But then at the same time, we were both like, eh, who's gonna run it? And then I was telling Stevie like, man, I'm not sure what I wanna do, but you know, I don't really feel like fucking with Alien anymore. Wait a minute, why don't I just come over to you guys? And yeah, it was just like that. I just got one. I've had four. I've had four of them and I've given each one away. Somebody would be like, damn, I really wanted one of those and blah, blah. And I'm like, eh, all right, I'll give you one. They don't ask me. I'll just be like, okay, cool. Because that to me, it's cool when people have cool stuff that they think is cool, you know? And I was at KO a couple weeks ago and, and they have like pallets of old boards and I saw that color, like five of them in a stack. And I was like, is that the abduction board? Let me get one of those. I cut one out and got one. I'm gonna skate mine. I'll be tight. Biggie. Whew. Sometimes not, sometimes Jay Z. Boombox. Miss it. Harvey's the man. Harvey's great. I never really knew him, but the first thing that comes to my head now is just Rasta. The truth. Really the truth, man. Kareem was a good dude. Ricky Iola, or Ricky, Ricky o Oyola. Ball breaker, asshole, in a good way. Sweaty. Nice kid. Oh wow, look at that. Switch heel sequence, over to bump the can. Maybe I didn't know that it was in the contents of Thrasher. It may be. I mean, I just saw that frame just recently uh, floating around on Instagram. That Frankie shot, or you put up. A Frankie shot it, right? Shot it. Yeah. And he said he had to crop out Bill. Bill was kind of Why would you crop out Bill? Switch backside flip. That was the one that I never fully rode away. <laughs> you were there for that? That's amazing. Was like <laughs> Do you want me to tell you what happened in that footage? I was uh, at Deirdick's house in Pacific Beach, and I'm like, yo, I got the tape. And I had the little tape, and we put the tape in the thing, and we were watching it, and there's a switch backside flip, and it had a glitch in it. I was like, give me the fucking tape. He gave me the tape, and I just, <laughs> like that, and I just ripped it out, the whole thing. And he was like, what the fuck are you doing? And I was like, I just fucking had a glitch, I'm over it. He was just like, what? That's what happened in the switch backside flip. I mean, it's gotta be the tray flip. Second one. Yeah. But I really like this too. G was telling me just today, he's like, yo, after the tray flip. You go over, sit on the ledge, your lady comes up, gives you your little one, and I just get my little one and then say something in the camera. And I'm like, what? I need that footage. Look in the camera. Woo! Say, what's up, G? What's up, G? <laughs> and we out. Honestly, all of them, man. I had to work so fucking hard for every trick over that can, except for the Vario Hill. And the Vario Hill was done out of spite. Everything else was because I wanted to do it. Yeah, the Vario heel was, I was trying to front shove it and it kept kind of over flipping and Rob Pahowski and uh, Jimmy Gregory were literally standing right there and they're Vario heel magicians. So I went over to him like, yo guys, you gotta do a Vario heel. I mean, it's fucking, you guys can do it. I'm almost doing it on accident. I don't even do that trick. You guys should do it. And they were like, eh, you know, I'm kind of cool guy, you know. We're just gonna do some flat ground, you know? And I was like, 
fuck that. Cracked one, it kind of worked. I looked at Blayback, I was like, let's shoot this. First try with Blayback, bang, that was the one. Game is save it and hold that, you catch And so it was kind of out of spite, because I was like, come on, do it, guys. The switch backside heel came because of the switch heel. It was like a mental note. I was switch healing it, and a lot of times it would float backside. And then, you know, that's how you bail it. And I remember like, damn, this thing switch back healable. And I suck at switch back heel. So like, what, however long it was later, that worked too. Yeah. I was always disappointed teams, you know, would come through. Cause they'd always be like, yo, pop up the towel. I think the majority of my bump to can tricks were because people came through to skate and wanted to pop up the towel. And I pop up the towel and then they ollied off it a few times and you drag the can out in front of it and then they'd all sit down and I was like, well, fuck, if it bumps up, might as well go for it. If you stand in my way, I'ma have to spray. Learn that if you come against me, son, you're gonna have to pray. Since back in the day, I held the weight and kept my head up. They wanna see the guard catch a L, it's all a setup. I give no man a thing power over me. Why these niggas so jealous and looking sour over me? I'm bold G. I'm like impossible to stop. I'm like that nigga in the ring with you, impossible to drop. I'm like two magazines fully loaded to your one. Plus, I ain't gonna quit spitting till you're done. Plus, more than ever, I got my whole shit together. More than a decade of hits that'll live forever. Catch a rep of my name, you're bound to fry. Know how many niggas and I know it's down to die. We never fail, and we ain't never been frail. You niggas talk crime, but you're scared of jail. Full clip, you wanna mess with this?